If you're a power user on Windows, you got that taskbar in check. It's got 1300 icons and you want to actually turn them into groups. Well, believe it or not, there's something called taskbar groups. Now, this was suggested by channel name, but they have only one N, so it's Chanel name. Anyways, to start off, you need to go to the first link in the description. You will see this download page. Click on assets, then click on taskbargroups.zip. Obviously, taskbar is on Windows, so this is Windows only. Next up, go to the second link in the description, and you will see this error with mon multiple monitor setup stuff. All you got to do is scroll down, and you will see this comment by PikeNote that says release.zip. Click on that. We are doing that because if you have two monitors, these taskbar groups won't work with the second monitor. It's really weird, and that's why I didn't make a video on it sooner. Now, once you have all those files, just go into your downloads folder, open that bad boy up, and you should see the two zip files. You want to double click on taskbar groups, and you want to drag this folder into your downloads folder. Then, once you drag the taskbar groups folder into your downloads, open it up and double click on taskbar groups. And what it should do is say Windows protected your PC. Click more info, click run anyways, and it will run anyways. Now, in the background, you will have a couple files that generate, and what we want to do first is we just want to configure it, then apply the patch for secondary monitors. So to start off, how do we use taskbar groups? Let me get this uh, downloads folder out of the way. So taskbar groups is actually really easy to use. All you need to do is click add taskbar group, and now you can change the name of the group. So you could say productivity, uh, I'm really good at typing. And you can also change the width of the group, which doesn't really make sense right now, but I'll show you the two differences later when I make two groups. So once you have the new name of your group, you need to A, change the group icon if you want. You don't have to do this. I'm not going to for the first one, but I'll do it for the second one. Then you have add new shortcut. All you need to do is click add new shortcut and you will see your Windows start menu programs. Now you need to navigate to either the shortcut or the exe file of any application you want to use. So for example, Google Chrome is really easy to find. So I'm going to click on Google Chrome and click open and it will add it. I'm going to add another shortcut and I'm going to do Microsoft Edge in case I'm a weirdo and use two web browsers. And most of these are easy if they're in this folder. Now mind you, there are some applications that might be harder to find. For example, how do I find Discord in this? Well, what you'll need to do is most likely you'll need to go to this PC, your C drive, then go to program files, either program files or program files x86, and look for the application you're looking for. So I'm looking for Discord. It's not in normal program files. I'm looking for Discord again. It's not even in x86 program files. So it can get a little more confusing and hard to find things. I found the best thing to do is actually just go to your documents folder, create a new folder, and call it shortcuts. And you could spell it wrong. It doesn't really matter. And what you want to do is actually click cancel on the taskbar groups, go back to your file explorer, go to your documents folder, and you should see the shortcuts folder. All you want to do is open up your start menu, look for the application you want, so Discord, and just drag it into that folder. And when you do that, you're actually creating a shortcut in that folder. Now you can do that with a whole bunch of apps. Also, what you can do is if you have the shortcut on your desktop, you can actually, first off, I need to show my icons. You could drag the shortcut from your desktop into the folder and it will remove it from your desktop, which is awesome, and it'll put it in that shortcuts folder. Now, what you need to do is fill up this shortcuts folder with all the shortcuts you want with your taskbar. That's just because it's way more convenient than trying to find the files and stuff. I showed you the two best ways of finding shortcuts. So once you do that, go back to taskbar groups, and all you need to do is click add a new shortcut, go to your documents folder, go to the shortcuts folder, and now you can select Discord in the Microsoft Store. It's that easy. It's extremely straightforward. That's probably the best way of doing it. Now we have a couple options here. We have dark color, light color, and custom color, and we also have opacity. So obviously dark is dark, light is light, and custom color you can choose from here. It's going to be very hard to find a color you want. I would just stick with either dark or light depending on your Windows color scheme. And the opacity itself is the transparency of the background of the taskbar group. I'm going to leave this one at 10% and I'll have the other one as 100% just to show you a comparison. And you have one final option that is allow open all shortcuts. So if you press control and enter, when you click on a taskbar group, it will open every single shortcut, which is good if you need specific applications open for specific scenarios. Anyways, I'm going to click save and that is my first group. Now, like I said before, I'm going to create a second group and I'm just going to name it whatever. I'm going to increase the width just so you can see the difference. I'm going to add a group icon. I'm going to pick my background. I'm gonna add a couple shortcuts real quick. 
and I'm going to pick a higher opacity value so you understand what that means, and I'm going to allow open all shortcuts and press save. Now I have these two taskbar groups, so how do I apply them to my taskbar? Well, right click on the group and it'll show up with this thing here and it will be a couple of shortcuts. You need to drag these shortcuts onto your taskbar. And once you do that, you finally have the groups added. So all these extra files that you have, like Microsoft Store, you can unpin, Discord, you can unpin, and Chrome, you can unpin if you want. It's all up to you. But that is how you set it up. Now, how does it actually function? Well, if you just click on the taskbar group, you'll notice it pops up and you can see the icons. So, like I said before, the weird letter one is the one with the higher transparency value. So when I click on it, you notice that all my icons are very hard to see. But if I click on the productivity one, the one that I spent more time on, you'll notice that it is a lot darker and it's a lot easier to see what is going on. So quick little side note here that I totally just didn't edit in. I changed the width to one for a specific reason because it'll make sense. Width is actually the number of icons in each row of your group. So for example, if you have it as one, it is just going to be a column of applications. So if I click save and I click on the weird one, you'll notice it's just a column. But if I click on the normal productivity one, you'll notice that it is a row. So using your brain power, if I change the width of the productivity group to two, it should be a two by two group. So I'm going to do that right now, change it to two, press save, and now it's a two by two group. So that's what the width adjustment means. Remember how I said before that I can have that super cool control enter shortcut to open all the apps in a taskbar group? Well, I'm going to use it for the weird group, press control enter, and you'll notice that Edge opens up, but not Chrome. And that's because some applications just unfortunately don't work with taskbar groups, specifically Chrome. That's the one I've found so far. Mind you, this computer really doesn't have a lot of applications on it. So your mileage may vary. Even if I try opening it normally and clicking on it, it doesn't work. You need to have it just as its own shortcut outside of the taskbar groups. Moreover, there is another weird bug that I found, which is kind of a pain in the rear, if I'm going to be honest, and that's if you edit a group and enable the allow open all shortcuts and press save, and you try doing it on specific groups, it just doesn't work. So mind you, this application doesn't get updated very frequently, so if it's too buggy for you, I would suggest maybe not using it and uninstalling it. But before you get a little too tempted to uninstall, just remember that we haven't actually installed the patch yet. So close taskbar groups, then open up File Explorer, go to Downloads, open up the release zip file, copy all the files in here, press Control C, go back to your downloads, click on taskbar groups, then paste it in and press replace the files in the destination or location or whatever it said. Next up, just double click on the taskbar groups, and now you need to click more info and run anyways, and you will have taskbar groups open. Now, what does this patch specifically do? Well, if you have two monitors and drag it over to your second monitor, which uh, I can't do because my virtual machine is one monitor, basically if you try using it, it'll crash instantly, but using this release, it patches it so that you could use this on a second monitor for us productivity nerds. And that wraps up the installation portion of the video. If it worked, like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel even further, just turn off your ad blocker when you watch my videos. And if for some odd reason it didn't work out for you, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section or join my Discord and put your issue in the help channel and I will help you out as soon as I can. Now let's get on to the uninstall portion of the video. So let's say one of your taskbar groups are just a little too buggy and you just want to get rid of them. All you need to do is actually just right click the taskbar and click unpin from taskbar. But let's say, screw it, I don't want it anymore. I've tried lighting candles and making myself feel safe and I just can't use it anymore. Well, all you need to do to remove taskbar groups is uh, just close the application, go to your downloads and delete the taskbar groups folder that you made. Now once you do that, go to your bottom right and click on the drop down menu and you should notice that there's no taskbar groups thing in there. And if you click on taskbar groups, nothing will happen. And that's because that specific folder houses the application. So maybe try not to like delete that folder or put it somewhere that it just can't access. Basically just try to keep it safe. And all you need to do to finalize the uninstall portion of the video. Wow, that sounds weird. Anyways, just right click on any of your taskbar groups and unpin them from the taskbar. And now you're back to your normal Windows computer. Mind you, I deleted one of the shortcuts, which is sad, and I gotta hide them. Oh, well, this is gonna be a disaster of a video to edit, so I'm gonna light these candles and hopefully... Oh gosh, the smell of... 
Mohair Arjant won't be able to save me. <laughs>